What about me biscuit? Bertie barked. At first, the attendant chuckled and made to turn away. But Bertie reached out and tugged his arm. No, wait, I mean it. What about me biscuit? Bemused, the man turned back. I put a pound in that blasted thing. No, I didn't do it for the fun of it, lad. I want one of them. And he prodded the glass to indicate the Kit Kats. The assistant shuffled uneasily, unsure how to respond. I uh, see. The, the, you see, the, the thing is, sir, that the machine's broken, so I need to report it to maintenance. Uh, this time of an evening, there's nothing we can do. But at least you got your money back. Now, don't be getting smart, sonny. I got me brass back, because that damp thing tried to gobble it up. And as I say, you got it back. And as I say, that isn't good enough. I want a biscuit. Sir, the maintenance people will have all gone home by now. It's nearly nine. Then you can get them brought back, lad. That thing took my money, and it isn't delivering the goods. And I'm not having it. Look. And he threw up his arms, defeated. What do you want me to do? The machine is broken. Well, we can all see that, you bloody lump. Who do you think you're talking to? A flaming idiot? If it's Brock... Get the blokes who are paid to fix it, to fix it. And as I've explained to you, there's nobody in work at this time. Of, so you want me to stand here like a bloody lemon, short-changed, all because your lazy staff can't be bothered getting out of bed. Now, you know that isn't what I said, and you know that isn't true. The attendant was exasperated. He bit his lip, breathed deeply, and fixed Bertie in a patient, focused stare. Unfortunately, machines can be temperamental, and this one clearly has a fault. Thankfully, we, we got your payment returned. Aye, only because I came and found you to tell you, if it had been left to you, I'd have never have seen that pound coin again. This thing's probably been swallowing folks cash up all day, and who's to say your lot haven't been pocketing it, eh? On the take, like. Right, I've had enough of this now. I'm sorry, but I've better things to do than be accused of, and I've better things to do than waste me hard-earned money on non-existent Kit Kats. Now, I'm laying it on line to you, son. I'm not playing silly buggers. This is how it is. I paid me money, and I want me biscuit. Well, you'll just have to come back tomorrow when it's been fixed. Don't you go walking away from me, young man. I'll be reporting this to your superiors. Aye, I'll see you slung out on your bloody ear for insolence. Now, your machine has stolen my money and is refusing to dispense my goods, which I've paid for. And all you can do is waltz off like a flaming fairy, like all things a joke. Well, it isn't good enough. Look, if you feel that strongly about it, why not bob your quid back in and try again? Otherwise, I really... Because I don't trust the ruddy thing. That's why! And Bertie swung his foot into the side of the machine. There was a loud prang, and for a moment it wobbled slightly. Bertie stood facing the machine with a blank expression, muttering to himself. The attendant gingerly approached inspecting the dint. He looked at Bertie. Well, he said, slowly standing up, you've well and truly knackered the thing now, haven't you? I hope you realise this is criminal damage and you're on camera. What the... What the flaming hell are you talking about, lad? I haven't done notice this thing. You kicked the machine and now you... Aye, because of your incompetence blared Bertie, raising a fist. He was red in the face. If either of us should be getting as collar felt, it's you, you bloody imbecile. I told you it wouldn't work. And what did you do, eh? Sweet Fanny Adams, that's what. You couldn't care less, could you? Now, I paid my money. Fair and square, sunshine. Fair and flaming square. It isn't my fault if your machines are up the spout. If your workmen are too bone idle to shift themselves, or if you're too bloody thick to know one end of a vending machine from t'other, it's your job, lad. You ought to know what you're doing with the damned things. I'm sure they pay you enough. No, I'm not getting into this. You can save your speeches for the police. Police? I'll give you bloody police, you silly little squirt. It's you once locking up, lad, not me. 
They want to chuck you behind bars for being a useless, good-for-nothing jobsworth, a gormless moron who does nothing when your stupid machine goes fiddling folks for cash. It's taking me brass as this thing. On to understanding, I get one of them. Again, he jabbed a finger on the glass. It's a Kit Kat I want. Do you get that? A Kit Kat. Not any of your waffle and crap about workmen and machines and bleeding police. I don't want to hear any of that nonsense. I want a Kit Kat. Do you understand? Can you get that into your thick skull? I want a Kit Kat. And I'll tell you something else, Squire. I'll not be moving until I bloody well get one.